so Ian, thank you everyone for turning out tonight. It's a fantastic uh, turnout tonight. And uh, thank you, Sally, um, for hosting us tonight. You know, Melbourne City Council um, has got a great record of advocating um, for better transport right across the city. And I'm, you know, it's been really impressed to see some of the ideas and some of the things that Melbourne City Council have recently put forward. And I think any, any political party and, and government would do well to listen to them. So, well done, Melbourne City Council. Um, my name's Dan Gibbons, I'm the Greens Transport Spokesperson, I'm the MP for Paran. Um, you know, I'm pretty passionate about transport issues. Um, you know, when I was first elected, um, you might remember I, was, uh, I uh, opted to forego uh, the car provided by Parliament, which used to ride my bike into Parliament instead, which still gets uh, roads across the electorate, it's the only thing that people might remember me for. Um, and of course the Greens have been in Parliament for uh, over 10 years now, and, you know, fighting for better public transport when it was just really an afterthought or it felt like it was just an afterthought for the other parties. Um, you know, we're facing a really big challenge now here in Melbourne um, in terms of transport. We are at a critical juncture um, with a growing population that potentially might overtake Sydney uh, by 2031. Um, we're going to take, have to take some really dramatic steps over the next decade or so, otherwise we're just going to face uh, a future of growing congestion and growing overcrowded on public transport, which will essentially trash the livability of Melbourne, which we all know is a great place to live. Um, and there are three factors I see at play, and this is a seat we've got you know, a rapidly growing population. We've had uh, inertia over many years, we've had um, massive underinvestment in both public transport infrastructure and government funding for services that we've required. Um, uh, I think, you know, credit where credit is due, I think, well, the current government will disagree with um, some of their projects in terms of toll roads. I think they have turned the corner, certainly um, differentiate themselves from the previous government where we saw um, massive inertia in terms of infrastructure and public transport infrastructure spending. Um, and we've had, uh, uh, we've had a business as usual approach where, um, where there uh, has been investment, it's been in these massive uh, toll roads uh, instead of public transport. Uh, and when there's been uh, investment uh, in public transport or in sustainable transport, um, it's been a piecemeal approach. And really, to address these three factors, um, we need uh, a transport plan. We need uh, a transport plan to deal with population growth. Um, a plan that puts the public interest first. And as it stands, this state does not have a transport plan. Um, and in the absence of that plan, uh, we're seeing projects like you know, the Westgate Tunnel, um, which uh, wasn't on the agenda of the last election, that's sort of suddenly you know, transurban bowled up. Um, and you know, it looks like it's being designed you know, purely for the profits of transurban. I mean, um, transurban essentially seems to be the first privatised government department. I mean, they're planning, building, owning and operating transport infrastructure here in Victoria. Uh, and that really should be the job of the government. Um, we need significant and ongoing investment. Um, that means um, having a strong revenue base, uh, borrowing to invest in infrastructure. Um, and we need recurrent funding for services. Uh, and I think that's uh, one area that has been weakness of the current government. Whilst we are seeing big major projects, um, we haven't seen that uh, ongoing uh, recurrent funding uh, in services to keep up with growth. Um, and finally, we need, uh, when we do have investment, you know, it needs to be transformative. Um, that means moving away from the mega toll roads and the constant investment in these, in these um, giant roads uh, and shift that funding over uh, to investment in public transport and sustainable transport instead. Um, we're seeing, you know, on the table, it seems this election from the opposition, you know, $30 billion worth of toll roads. Um, the North East Link, the East West Link, the Westgate Tunnel. I mean, imagine what we could do if we invested that in public transport instead. And the investment needs to be, you know, holistic. Um, we're seeing a lot of piecemeal investment, you know, a line here, an upgrade here. But we need to be looking at the transport system as a whole. Um, when we look at the train network, you know, I think what is occurring on the Dandenong line, uh, when we've got you know, the high capacity signaling, the level crossing removals, uh, the new high capacity trains. I think that's a great model to roll out across the entire network. We need a plan to do that, to really transform our train network from that outdated, you know, unreliable suburban system that it is, into that modern high capacity uh, frequent metro that it needs to be. 
uh, similarly with our tram network. Um, uh, I think as we've seen from the number 96 project, um, which has been uh, many years in the making, where we're getting you know, the new trams, the upgraded uh, level access stops, uh, the separation from traffic. That's you know, a great model to roll out across our entire tram network. Uh, but as it stands, you know, the, the route number 96 project has taken many, many years. Um, similarly with our buses, yeah, you know, uh, when we've had, I think, smart buses introduced, you know, we saw that the funny thing about buses, if you put them on often enough and they turn up, people will start catching them. Um, but uh, uh, I think we had a review, a major review of our buses in about 2010, uh, and not much came of it. Um, it's now time to do another review and start looking at rolling out smart buses across those uh, bus routes where it's required. And finally, of course, uh, cycling and walking, where, um, again, underinvestment, piecemeal investment, uh, you know, it's such a, a low hanging fruit and such a, I guess, a cost effective investment. Uh, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, Infrastructure Victoria was mentioned, something Infrastructure Victoria uh, has put up as something that governments should be, should be investing in. Um, so, with the election so far, you know, the Greens have put forward uh, three uh, major transport initiatives. Uh, with more to come, don't worry. Um, and I'll just go through them. Our first initiative was to extend the Melbourne Metro. Now, the Melbourne Metro is a project that, um, of course, yes, is overdue. Uh, should have started eight years ago, uh, but it was abandoned by the previous uh, government. Uh, and it did feel at times that no matter what question this current government was asked about transport, the answer was always, well, we're building uh, the Melbourne Metro. Um, but, you know, we're so far behind in what we need in infrastructure in the state that we need to actually start looking beyond what the current project is uh, and extend the, be the, the benefits of Melbourne Metro to as many people as possible with extensions to the outer suburbs, to Melbourne, to Clyde, uh, an interchange uh, at South Yarra Station that uh, you know, I've been fighting for, for for many years now. And, you know, it's a good on a, on a uni, uni ticket with the, uh, the Liberals now. We should have been on a unity ticket seven years ago. If we had been on a unity ticket then, we wouldn't be debating South Yarra Station connected to Metro. It would be being built right now. Um, so uh, uh, extending the Melbourne Metro really is, uh, uh, we can't afford to sort of just set and forget that project. We need to be realising the benefits for as many Victorians as possible. Now, if the Melbourne Metro is the project that we needed in uh, this decade, Melbourne Metro 2 is the project that we need for the next decade. This is, you know, I think it's a critical piece of infrastructure that will really be uh, the defining piece of infrastructure that will define livability in Melbourne. Um, this is the, the, the project that would link the South Barang and uh, Ruby lines, uh, bringing high capacity signalling to those lines. Uh, new trains that are overcrowded, uh, it will allow for Doncaster Rail, it will bring rail to Fisherman's Bend, um, and it will allow for extensions to the outer suburbs. Um, today we've announced uh, the Greens policy of committing $100 million uh, to start paying now for Melbourne Metro 2. Uh, it's a far better investment than you know, the North East Link and the West Bay Tunnel and the East West uh, Link. Um, planning for Melbourne Metro 2 needs to start now um, so we can get, uh, get it built and the benefits can be realised as soon as possible. We can't wait another decade uh, for this project to get up and running. And finally, our, our third uh, uh, announcement that we've made so far is to put public transport back into public hands. Uh, our transport system needs to be run in the public interest for the public good. That means ending the privatised franchise, franchise agreements for trains and trams. Privatisation of public transport has been a complete failure. I think we're going to spend around four to five billion uh, in running trains or trams just in a year. That should be spent in the public interest and none of it should be going towards the private profits. We need also an urgent review of Transurban's profits uh, to see if we can return signalling to public ownership and certainly not enter into sweetheart deals uh, with toll extensions to build the Westgate Tunnel. Uh, so finally, the transport, you know, of course, is a major uh, priority for the Greens this election. We've got a really clear alternative uh, to transport from the other parties. Uh, and we want to be in Parliament fighting for change. And of course, if we're lucky enough to be in the balance of power, well, that will put us in a very strong position to deliver our policies. Thanks a lot.